afternoon to you. Hope you're having a good day wherever you are today. Hope you're wrapped up warm. We've seen the lowest temperature this morning of uh, the season, the winter season so far across uh, the British Isles at Sennybridge and Poes. In Wales, we see the temperature down to minus 11.3 degrees. So, so, yeah, it was a pretty cold morning for sure. You know, what's more impressive is the fact that we're seeing uh, widespread minus sevens, minus eights, even some minus nines as well across parts of the British Isles that doesn't have snow on the ground. Had there been widespread snow on the ground, folks, we would have been seeing much, much colder temperatures uh, across the board. But certainly we have got the colder firmly established has been intensifying over the past you know 24 hours or so that's been the reason uh, for uh, the much lower temperatures clear skies light winds all that warmth well you know if you can call it that one two three degrees uh, all that warmth during the daytime is, is quickly escaped back up to space at night time allowing that radiational cooling but like I say the only thing that was missing last night really in a widespread scale was that snow cover but certainly over the course of the time we're going to see another very cold night we'll be seeing temperatures widely down to you know minus five to minus eight celsius particularly away from the warmth of towns and cities but certainly a couple of rural sport uh, spots it uh, wouldn't surprise me if we've seen down to minus 12 maybe even minus 13 tonight so <laughs> it's a, a night for grabbing the jacket for sure but all eyes folks are on a, a weather system that's trying to push in off the atlantic and of course, we have got plenty of cold air anchored, firmly established over the British Isles. And the big question that everybody is asking is, are we going to see snow in our given area? Now, I want to have a quick look off the GFS model. The GFS has a tendency of kicking these systems and kicking cold air out too quick. So I'm going to show you this here, folks. We've got two interesting scenarios taking place. First and foremost, like I mentioned on the Facebook page, that um, and I encourage you to check that out if you're if you're following uh, this European cold spell. Some significant numbers. Of course, we've had nearly 200 people dead across, particularly uh, Eastern Europe, with the severe cold, the snow, and those conditions are are certainly not uh, um, improving at the moment. But certainly check out the Facebook page. I'm giving you updates. I'm giving you some of the latest uh, ideas that's coming to my mind. And so far, folks, without sounding as if I'm um, you know, uh, being boastful, this forecast has been very accurate. I'm very, very pleased. Having uh, busted in the first part of the winter uh, in terms of the cold and the snow, I feel as if I've nailed this one uh, and I feel more satisfied with the forecast that we were going to be seeing a significant continent-wide cold spell and, of course, some record-breaking snows. But as the system here, this band of precipitation, this is um, basically the, the frontal system that's trying to push in attached to a pretty decent area of low pressure. That, of course, is going to try and build and force warmer air into the British Isles. And, of course, with the colder in place, that creates an atmospheric fight zone. I'm going to talk to you uh, in just a second about that. But what? look at the amount of precipitation that's blossoming anywhere from, you know, basically from just off the north, northwest African coast all the way up across Italy into the, you know, the Balkan nations all the way up through, uh, you know, um, Serbia, uh, you know, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, and that will stretch further and further north. There's an area of low pressure here, folks. The core of the cold is now starting to shift more up into the Baltic nations. So that's up to around here, you know, Lithuania, uh, you know, Latvia, Estonia, starting to push into the uh, southern Finland as well. That core of cold is starting to lift northwestwards. And what it's going to do is, this area of developing low pressure is going to kick off a major snowstorm from Italy. So cities like Rome, up into Bosnia, Sarajevo, surrounded and high up in mountains, we're going to be looking at uh, feet or even metres of snow. A severe snowstorm, folks, is going to en envelop anywhere from Italy up through the Balkans into you know the Ukraine, Bulgaria, Romania, the Ukraine 
all the way up into the western part of Russia. So a severe snowstorm is unfolding for this part of Europe. As that core of cold, the cold starting to ease slightly, allowing this um, moisture, this storm system to propel up into the existing colder. Even though the colder itself starting to ease from the region, there is still a heck of a lot of colder in place. And that, of course, is the problem but of course up here in the balkan nations uh, the baltic nations so to say uh, we have got the coldest air of the season for uh, cities such as uh, minsk um riga and up in the Tallinn as well even parts of uh, uh, southern finland such as uh, helsinki could be looking at their coldest temperature of the season so far and we also have central and and south western parts of europe as well could be looking at some record cold temperatures as well temperature uh, in Paris this morning dropped to at least minus 9 Celsius that is of course 16 in Fahrenheit in Amsterdam at least minus 7 uh, Brussels minus 10 so we're talking about severe cold weather folks and what's more impressive is the fact that we don't have snow on the ground but certainly it's indicative of just how cold the air is and I do believe over the next 48 hours we could be looking at even colder weather for parts of Germany through the low countries in the France covering the majority of France we could be looking at severe minus 20 to minus 30 in parts of France even down into the northern and central part of Spain you're looking at your coldest weather of the season so far but let's have a quick look at the British Isles all eyes on the British Isles are we going to see cold, uh, cold and snow uh, or are we going to see milder and wetter weather Persh, and that is the golden question at this time. If you want my opinion, I believe that the colder is more established, is more intense at the low levels where the models do not pick it up and that is going to cause problems in terms of snowfall through the Scottish Central Belt. So from Glasgow all the way across to Edinburgh, I think we're going to be seeing a covering of snow initially. And as tomorrow wears on, and as eventually those temperatures start to gradually pick up during the course of tomorrow, because the milder, I do think, will win out further north, and unfortunately, because we've got a, a person more southwesterly airflow pulling in that moisture off the Atlantic, that warmth as well, and I think the initial, uh, you know, the initial cold air temperatures dropping quite quickly tonight, but as that moisture pushes in, the southern uplands, you could be looking at uh, parts of South Lanarkshire, Dumfries and Galloway, the higher ground uh, up over the M74, you could be looking at a few inches of snow, nasty travel conditions tomorrow morning, uh, but as the day progresses after Glasgow and the central belt perhaps sees you know anywhere from a coating to an inch and a half perhaps at very most two inches i do think later on in the afternoon and the evening is when we're going to start to see that precipitation transition back over to rain that's my opinion at the moment but i'm going to try and continue to keep you updated as for the points further south so you're talking about in the cumbria now uh, down in through cheshire the 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 west, the, all the Midlands, and uh, down into the south and southeast of England, we could be looking at a significant snowfall. So we're looking at colder air temperatures. Uh, really, that that lower base of the atmosphere is probably colder over, uh, you know, from the Midlands southwards, and that I think is the problem here for forecasters, and that's why the the the, the snow forecast is more pronounced over the Midlands and the southeast of England in particular. You know, so if you're if you live in Manchester, down through you know, Birmingham into Greater London, you are probably talking about a significant, you know, two, maybe even four inches of snow, especially in the outlying areas of these cities, folks, away from that warmer uh, urban environment. You are talking about a significant snowfall. But as we progress into the later evening hours tomorrow. Now, this is all uh, speculation at the moment. Uh, you know, the frontal system itself, that uh, rain burn and our, our snow burn frontal zone may have a tough time getting through the cold air. It depends on the depth of the cold air. That is a very important thing, folks, is the depth of the cold. If that air mass and the column over the British Isles is too deep, the front will... And, uh, basically stole out and have a problem pushing further 
East. Remember, folks, as well, that this mild Atlantic air has to try and moisten up a very dry continental air mass. So there's a lot of factors at play. There's a lot of complications here. So to summarise, Scotland, initially, snowfall, covering the snow, could become disruptive during the early and mid to late morning period. Into the afternoon, we'll start to see a, a recovery in temperatures and the, the potential for snow changing over terrain. As for points further south, particularly from uh, you know Cumbria, Lancashire, down through the Midlands, that is where your greatest snowfall potential is. The longer lasting snow the greater snowfall totals and even for parts of Wales as well we're going to be seeing probably a mix of snow and then perhaps a change over to freezing rain that could cause a lot of problems as well rainfall uh, landing on freezing ground creates an, uh, uh, um, icing conditions instantly uh, but there's a lot of things to talk about folks I apologize for the length of video there's so much information here to try and digest I'm going to try and give you another update before I go to my bed tonight. I'm, I am back into work tomorrow, but I'm going to try and keep you up to speed uh, with the very latest developments in the weather. So keep checking back the first hand weather and also my blog at weather, marthoganweather.blogspot.com. Keep up to date and I'll try and keep you uh, as refreshed as possible with the information. Have a good evening, folks. Bye bye.